Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to Yara's Clips. But yeah, what is life like as a spirit in the spirit world, according to you, based on everything you have encountered? Yeah, I think I I would call that that's what hell is. That's e what hell is. Even if you're living positively for your own. Uh, no, no, no. This I'm saying for the majority of the spirits, spirits who are stuck. Okay. So let's say uh, a spirit is attached to a particular. person you know and even after death that person is going to stay attached to that spirit is going to stay attached to that person now until unless that person has passed away that spirit is going to linger around you know not going to its spiritual world not trying to possibly enjoy if there is something like that in that world and still be lingering around that person and that person might have no clue that there's a spirit and that spirit could be his own best friend or family member or someone like that So imagine you are around your favorite person, and that favorite person is not able to acknowledge you, is not acknowledging you, is not listening to you, is not able to see you. That hurts. So what could be more hellish than that? Or for that matter, um, a person who died accidentally is now stuck to the place, or because where he died, for example. So now, according to the spirit, according to that person who died, there is no world outside these four walls. So you can only go to that room, come to this room, and then like this is my life. It's like a video game where the map ends yes. at the edges. Yes, and you cannot cross that map anymore. The moment you go, you will be, you know, like there's a disorientation happening, and that also happens because a lot of spirits fear what is lying ahead of crossing over. What the is lying ahead? I have no idea, yar. I'm still looking forward to it. Um, uh, you know, so that's why I keep on saying, you know, people. So we also comes a lot of people who are depressed and everything through our, uh, you know, like my partner Pooja. We uh, we also have a spiritual department. We do all kind of inner child healing and uh, you know generational healing and try to counsel a lot of people. And when someone says, you know, yar, we want to die. We don't want to live anymore. You know, this is too much to handle. And uh, just trying to calm them down, I say, yeah. Do you really think even after death you'll be free? you have a lot of work to do you know you know that uh, it's so difficult to bring up this topic on the podcast um when we talk about something like suicide one i feel you should talk to someone and understand what impact it will have on your loved ones yes. and family members yes but two from a more spiritual perspective and this is just what i have understood from speaking to monks and people like yourself existence after suicide is possibly way worse than what your existence exactly. was before exactly and you know no matter how positively you are staying for example my nani who has been trying to help my mother but imagine what all she could have done if she was alive of course she was taken away due to some reason which is not as painful and as um, something like suicide but still you know it's it's not like what it feels like to be a human being and that's why you know every day we wake up we wake up very energetically because we know we have been gifted this one additional day to enjoy which the spirits won't be getting no matter how positively they are staying unless unless there is something else that is happening after that stage also if i go on to say that so many of these spirits have actually proven that there is no concept of time as such because some of them are how do i say some of them are still stuck in the 1800s if they died in a war there's a graveyard in khandala where german prisoners of war have been buried we were investigating that place we encountered a soldier who was buried back in some 1800s and when we asked what date it is it says 1800 the man has no idea it is 2023 2022 leave that and we we investigated holkar bridge in pune said to be one of the most haunted locations in india we encountered a spirit that has been stuck there for the last from the 11th century 11th century 11th century century and you know that guy's name was uh, shrinivas you know he said his name is mr shrinivas you know the authority like thing and we kind of understood and then we we were using other devices that to kind of explain explained that he was a scholar who was put in a cupboard like a structure a box like structure he was mummified put in a cupboard like structure box like structure and he was thrown into a river while same, he was alive while he was alive he was murdered basically for some reason i don't know what Uh, how how do you get the name but from what device so like the device i explained psb7 um, you know it's a device that we use that uh, scans radio frequencies now it can it can look like any other radio pehle ke zamane mein jo aata tha but it's a small one and it scans radio frequencies but what makes the device very different is that we control the speed and the direction of the scanning 
For example, let's say there are 83.5 to 108 radio channels, you know, that's the spectrum. We have the control that it can scan from 83 to 105 or 105 to 83. Now, what happens by that is, let's say if I'm playing, uh, you know, recording or doing a session, playing it forward, let's say it's going from 83 to 105. Let's say by chance we are falling in the 93.5 red FM. There could be someone saying some random name Pooja and we're investigating a place and we're like, oh, Pooja is the name of the spirit. But if we reverse it, every sane name, every legal name will be reversed. Pooja will become some Ajup or something. Ranveer will become some weird name. It will be so weird that it it, it is kind of very un-internet. How do I say that? The human mind won't be able to uh, decode it. Hmm. So by that, what we are doing is we are keeping our mind at bay saying that please do not interfere by finding similar words from it. So when we reverse it, everything that comes in and because we also can, um, like I said, control the speed of it, we uh, speed it in a way that whatever output we are getting, it is uh, what we call as white sound. Okay. One second. I'll have to break this down yeah. a little more. Yeah. And this is the engineer in me also <laughs> excited. There was a movie once I saw called yeah. White Noise. Very old movie. I have heard about it. Yeah. yeah. And it was about this concept mm. that spirits communicate through white noise. Yeah. Uh, now, white noise is similar to, you know, an older television. I don't know if our Gen Z listeners yeah. would understand. Yeah. But when you flip to an untuned channel, there was just like a shh. Yes. Yes. That is white noise. Yes. yes. Or when you tune into a radio, radio frequency. That has no channel or anything like that. No response. That is white noise. Very true. So within white noise, you find these sound bits. That's Not sound bits, but using that white noise, they try to communicate. So we get responses on that device. So when we get Mr. Srinivas, we heard that from the device. Wow. So you can actually hear yeah, in the real time. voice. Yeah, in real time. It's a male, female, whatever we hear it. Why is in the scientific community also talking about this? Uh, because in the past, there have been many people who have disrespected this field and made it a work of a fool. If that's, um, if I'm making sense. Why? Because in the past, we have seen not just in India, but all over the world, there are more fake people in this field than people okay. who are genuine. Okay. So it becomes a common misconception that, that is very fake. That cannot happen. You know, so... I, I know of certain physicists from UK and all who are staunch believer of paranormals and are doing researches which will blow your mind. And then I know also people who do not believe in it. You know, as a part of our job, the team we have, we also work with doctors uh, to understand the human mind more because the more we understand the human mind, the more we can reach out to a fact that what else it can do to trigger certain responses, to do certain things, to do what happens after death, you know. So it, there are people who are researching, but then, you know, I think, but this is my personal belief, we are too busy in our day-to-day -to -day job to give any importance to a subject like ghost or spirit. Yeah. Okay. Because you know? science helps engineering and you only do research in those scientific fields which have direct yeah. human application. Yes. Which solve a human problem. Exactly. And this may not be an out and out mainstream yeah. human problem. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what exactly it is, you know. So even when... And, you know, if we go by the definition of paranormal, which is also decided by a few of the scientists, it says that something that cannot be replicated in a scientific lab, which is impossible to replicate because paranormal doesn't necessarily happen in a scientific lab. Mm. How can you conclude in that aspect? Okay. Okay. So there's multiple challenges and you have to go out on the field, yeah, which is the main yeah, challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Rogan's podcast yeah. in USA was culturally important because he brought out things that the scientific community yes. should ideally acknowledge or the yes. evidence-based community should acknowledge. Yeah. And I hope that TRS does the same yeah. in some other Please departments. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, if there is actual quantifiable data here, the scientific community should be talking about this and this is yes. the answer you should give the skeptics. Yes. So how do you explain this? Yes. But then you know what, Ranveer, I have, considering for the experiences that I have, um, I can, we, we have this belief that no proof is required for a believer no proof is enough for a non-believer. Mm. That's how it goes. At the end of the day, it's how open you are. Yeah, no argument will convince a skeptic. Yes. I want to continue that white noise tangent. Yeah. Uh, so The yeah. Srinivas story. Yes. So the white noise is basically what they use to communicate. Uh, you know, so that is the device we use to get voices and all. And, uh, and why white noise? Because we all know that, and it's a very scientific thing, every color comes from white. You put a prism in front of a white noise, it becomes vivgyar. 
same goes for so basically white noise contains all the spectrum it's just the way of splitting it same way white noise white noise contains all the spectrum so our idea is if we can tap in all the spectrums by that white noise maybe we can figure out where that spirit is talking to so that's how we got in touch with Srinivas. And as we are trying to communicate and ask more questions, we're getting words like cupboard. Uh, and then we are like, cupboard, are you talking about a box? Yes. Then we got the word uh, tape. And uh, we thought it's it's saying that we are taping as in we are recording it. And uh, uh, we were like, are you saying that, you know, we are taping it? It says no, tape again. So when we're like, why it's coming tape uh, again and again, we thought, where you mummified tape? You were taped. It said, yes. And uh, why did you die? There was no answer to it. And we felt so bad because someone from the 11th century is still stuck. We just wrapped it up in two minutes without trying to answer more, th ask more things by saying, you know, Mr. Srinivas, I think you should know that it is 2021. This is 2021. I have a question that yeah. might seem like a skeptical question, yeah, but yeah. I'm just asking. Please, please, please. Yeah. Um, how do you think he learned English? So uh, the same question was also asked uh, by a lot of people. Uh, in the, when we put out that video on our channel and uh, even I had that question so I went into Google and I realized English is one of the oldest languages and it was used 11th century back then too. really yes so I'm I was so prepared for this question <laughs> it was yeah. used in the 11th yes, century yes 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 okay it was used back then and uh, of course not the modern English that we have the broken English or I don't know, I think the literature people will have a better term to it. Neil or someone like that will know that more, but uh, they, they uh, used to use that. But, you know, when we said that, Mr. Srinivas, you do not belong to this place anymore. And, you know, we're really sorry what you went through. We are four people here. We are really praying. And, uh, you know, there is no praying, praying to someone, but just praying for someone that please find light. And we said that. And uh, 10 minutes, we just shut everything just out of respect so that, you know, he understands what we are trying to do. 10 minutes later, we start off the devices and everything and everything and everything. And for the next 45 minutes, there are no replies. And uh, why are we so sure that it was Mr. Srinivas and nothing? We're faking it because the two guys were accompanying us. They were not from my team. They're just skeptics who are out there to experience things. You know, so that's what Mr. Srinivas was. I think it's one of the closest emotional cases that we have investigated. You think he got released? I think so. I really pray that he, uh, you know, he 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 went to light, as we call it. What does it take for a spirit to get released? The realization. Just realization? Yes. Realization is the important part. But then, like I said, you know, there are a few people who, a few, a few spirits, uh, people in space are so common for us. A <laughs> uh, few spirits so, who have realized, but they want to stay voluntarily. Okay, again, because of like... Their reasons, whatever reason they have. How would they take revenge? Say you've been murdered by someone. You can't. And the, no spirit can. The only thing it can do is just try and scare them by doing activities and this person not being able to understand what the hell is happening with me. That's the only thing that can happen. If the person has what we call as a conscience or a conscience, whatever it is, then he might think, oh, is it the same spirit? But then why would that person think? Mm. You know, so yeah, there are different reasons why, you know, there's also one reason why spirits do not cross is because they fear the judgment day. As you have been taught, there's a hell uh, in Hinduism, Yamra Jayenge, in Bible, hell hoga. Uh, some other things are like that in different, different religion. So, because uh, we have grown following those things somewhere or the other, uh, even after death, we have that fear. What? Because everyone knows they have done some sin in their life. It can be a small lie to their mother or some mother like that, that spectrum. They all f know they have done something. Also, when they are dead, they are like, oh, freak, what will happen now? Will we, uh, malab, uh, will we be taken and put in a boiling a container of you know oil and everything where we'll be tortured and everything they have that fear so again those spirits they also do not leave they are like and that's why a lot of uh, you know uh, prisons are haunted because those criminals they have something in mind they're like we cannot leave this place there's something waiting for us that will be more harsh than what we went through in the prison sale so if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this it's the artist clips